Hi guys, welcome to my channel where we talk about everything from tech to films and all the fun stuff in between. So yes, it really feels good to watch those unboxings of that 1500 plus MacBooks and Pros and even the Ultra laptops and Surface books. But for an average user, do they really need to spend in excess of 800 pounds for a laptop or 1200 pounds for a MacBook? Now, when I say average user, this excludes gamers, developers, designers, and other power users. For day-to-day -day tasks like checking email, internet surfing, watching videos, movies, using Microsoft Suite like Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, do you really need to spend so much to get a high-end laptop? We all know that the answer is a definite no. So in this video, I will unbox it and show you what 400 pound price point gets you in the Windows PC world and how efficient this really is. You can also get an iPad for that price point, but at times the versatility which a Windows laptop provides cannot be matched by an iPad. I made a video on whether you should buy an iPad or a laptop if there was a choice to just choose one device. And I will link that down below if you wish to check that out. So before proceeding, please do subscribe to my channel as your support means a lot to me and I can keep doing more interesting and informative videos like this. So let's get on with the unboxing. The unboxing is not going to make you feel any special like the Apple ones do. But mind you, you're just spending about 400 pounds and getting a full blown working laptop from HP running Windows Home. The box is slim and the experience feels like you're opening an Amazon delivery box with stuff in it which you ordered from the website. You get the laptop, the power brick and the paperwork and that's it. Here's the laptop in all its glory. So let's have a look around. The build quality feels decent. It feels a bit plasticky, but it doesn't have that total cheap feeling. Let's check around first. In the era of single port laptops, it's not bad here. We've got an Ethernet port, HDMI port, two USB ports, the 3.5 mm headphone jack on the side, along with the port for power. It's a clean slate on the front and on the side, you've got the SD card reader and another USB port with a slot for the laptop lock. So it does have all the ports which you need for now without having to use an adapter. We had an older generation of the same HP laptop which even had a DVD drive. They pulled it off from this updated version and probably saved off a bit of weight whilst doing so. Let's open it up. This is a 15.6 inch full HD display and you can see it has room to fit in a complete keyboard along with the number pad on the right. You get a decent trackpad with physical left and right clicks. Not sure if I'm a huge fan of this as it makes it look old school, but it totally wins when it comes to usability. With physical left and right clicks, you exactly know where to click without having to guess for the locations. Let's quickly check the specs here. It's an Intel Core i5 processor with integrated Intel UHD graphics chip clocking it at 1.6 GHz with up to 3.9 Turbo Boost. 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of solid state storage, 15 inch full HD display with peak 220 nits of brightness and 1920 by 1080 p resolution. The laptop comes with Windows Home and trust me guys, you don't need Windows Pro if you're just using this laptop at home and not going to join a domain. You can get i3 laptops for cheaper, but in my experience, Windows 10 is very comfortable with the i5 processor and 8 gigs of RAM. So I would at least suggest getting those specs as minimum. The i5 processor which I have is the 8th generation one, which is the most popular option adopted by 
a lot of manufacturers. You can get next generations, but those processes are not widely adopted yet and you need to pay a bit extra for them. Continuing with what's included in the box, the power brick is a 45 watt AC adapter and it is small and lightweight. The initial setup screen with Cortana speaking out to you, you can mute her if you don't want that voice feedback. And then you get a few basic settings like country, time zone, keyboard layout, connecting to the Wi-Fi. And then you need to log into your Microsoft account or create one. Strange that they enforce this at the moment as I don't see a way to skip this. Would be just good to create an offline local PC account. Then more settings, speech recognition, location services, send diagnostic data, improve typing, etc, etc. Actually, Windows asks you more questions than what Apple does during the setup process. So there you go, we are all logged in. Now let's choose a better picture to see that screen in all its glory. The brightness is cranked up to the max. The color does shift a bit, but it's not too bad. Let's look at a few HD wallpapers and see how they show up on the screen. I am actually going to upgrade this OS from Windows Home to Windows Pro as I need to join a domain. To normal users, you do not need this as Windows Home will be perfectly fine. To upgrade to Windows Pro, you need to open File Explorer, right click on this PC and then choose Properties. Then under Windows Activation section, you will have the option to change the product key. Click on that and you enter the new Windows Pro license key that you have purchased. Um, the Pro license costs from about £150, but you can find it slightly cheaper from third-party sellers. And a suggestion, if you have decided to upgrade to the Pro, do this before installing other software and files so you don't have to worry about taking backups just in case. Next is that it goes without saying Windows PCs and laptops need antivirus software. In fact, I wouldn't even connect this laptop to internet without having some sort of antivirus software installed. Now with HP, they partner with McAfee and Cheeky Burgers. They do not allow you to uninstall this software from the traditional ad remove programs menu in the control panel. You need to download this McAfee software removal tool app from the internet and then run that to uninstall. Once it's uninstalled, you're free to install whatever antivirus software you like. Next up is those speakers. Let's test them by playing a video. Hi guys, welcome to my channel where we talk about everything from tech to films and all the fun stuff in between. So most of us use our iPads for watching movies, surfing the web, checking email, doing a bit of office stuff, social media and watching YouTube. As you can see, it's not that bad. They're loud enough and you do not need to plug in external headphones to listen clearly. The Avengers weren't my first family. At some point, we all have to choose. Next, let's check this fairly graphics intensive game and see how much the laptop throttles. As you can see, it is not that bad besides my terrible driving. But hey, this is the first time I'm giving it a go on the laptop's keyboard. It would be much easier to pair a controller and play with that instead. Next, let's see the portability, shall we? It's slim, but big as it hoses a 15.6 inch screen. And at 1.78 kilograms, it is not lightweight but manageable. You can move it around your house and working on it by placing it on your laptop. You can probably go for an hour doing that. And also it'll probably keep your lap warm in this cold weather. 
let's try to push this laptop a bit and see what happens. I will open multiple tabs. Let's open Chrome with several websites. Let's open Edge as well. Open Paint, Photos, a Game, Outlook and see what happens. As you can see, it's still fine and I do not notice any lag or delay. Again, as I mentioned previously, Windows 10 is most comfortable at the i5 level with 8 gigs of RAM. So there you go. For the 400 price point, you do get a full proper working Windows 10 laptop with decent speed. Yes, you need to compromise on the build quality, the screen, bit of weight, but you do get a lot of laptop and a decent processor for the cost and it would easily last you for the next five years or so. I mean, compare this to my Dell Inspiron, which is a 13 inch touchscreen beast with core i7 processor and 16 gigs of RAM, but costs over 1200 pounds. So you can basically get three of these HP laptops over the cost. So if you really don't have that requirement, then this budget 400 pound laptop is all you need. Hope this video helps you guys. Please do comment down and let me know your thoughts or suggestions. Also, please do subscribe to my channel so I can continue making helpful and useful videos like this. And as always, thanks a lot for staying until the end. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.